then you have some options. So you might come with your legs stretched out long, feet flopping out towards either side in Shavasana. You may come into what's called active rest where the feet are as wide as your mat, the knees are bent, and then the knees gently knock inward towards each other. And then the final option is a butterfly, just in case you feel open and want to practice that, where the soles of the feet go together and the knees flop out towards either side. Good. And then you can close your eyes if you feel like it. If you don't want to close your eyes, that's okay too. And you have some options still with the arms. So you can have your arms just at your sides. This is more neutral energetically. A little bit more grounding. You could take your hands to the body. So an option would be to take maybe the right hand to the belly and then the left hand to the heart. And a little bit more energetically uplifting would be to take the arms up overhead, open the armpits, and then catch hold really casually of opposite forearm and then just let the hands and the wrist, the elbows be as passive as possible. Start to connect to your breath. Start to connect with the present moment by noticing sounds happening around you. Maybe you have the music to anchor to, or maybe it's the sounds of daily living around your home. I'm in an apartment and a lot of times I hear footsteps upstairs. And so when I'm in my yoga room, I use those footsteps rather than a distraction as an invite to bring myself in the now. And then start to shift your perspective to your internal environment, to your breath, the sound of your own breath as it enters the body. And the sound of your breath as it leaves. Very simple. And so the intention of the practice today on my end would be to be in the mystery of it all. So right now we're just watching and noticing the breath and watching and noticing noise around us without a need to get anywhere. Okay, we're just witnessing for the sake of witnessing. So the intention is to be in the mystery of it all without needing to know. It's a very simple intention, but a big ask. So just plant that seed if it resonates. And you can also overlap your practice with your own dedication. Right? There's a lot going on right now. And if there's something you want to dedicate your practice to, or someone or a group of people, maybe it's yourself, then go for it. Dedicate the efforts of your breath, of your body, of the movement that you're doing here today to that person, people, whatever comes to mind. And then we'll just take about three nice, full, deep breaths in and out as big as you can without strain at your own pace together in silence. And then taking your time, when you complete your next exhalation, we'll bend the knees in if they aren't already, bring your arms at your side if they aren't already, and then curl your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze. Holding from the shins or the hamstrings, your choice. Squeeze the knees in nice and close. 
work the base of the spine to the floor, and just a little warm up. Okay, you can rock side to side. <clears throat> you might decide to stay totally still, just working the base of the spine to the floor. Good. Good, and then release your arms into goal pose. So they're bent elbows, elbows in line with shoulders, and then legs come to tabletop. So the knees are bent, but the ankles rise up just slightly higher than the knees. And then we get nice and active through the feet, flexing the toes back, curl the tailbone up and in, taking an in breath here, press the back into the floor. And as you breathe out, draw the knees over to the right, but you're not gonna go all the way because you're gonna use your side body to inhale breath and bring it all back up to center. And as you exhale, draw the knees over to the left, but again, you don't have to go all the way because you'll use your, your obliques, your side body to bring the knees back up. And as you exhale, over to the right, nice. And then inhale back up. Every time you come back to the center point, keep pressing the back to the floor. And then as you exhale, knees over to the left. Good, inhale, bring it back up, draw the floating ribs in. And then as you exhale, over to the right. Inhale it back up. And then exhale to your left. Awesome. So you're moving like this at your own pace. You're getting that twisting action through the torso, but it's a lot of a core warm up as well. So just be patient and go at your own depth. So you might start to straighten your legs. If you feel like you need to up level this, straight legs will do the trick. So your legs straight will increase the weight load on the side body. And so if that feels right, go for that. Otherwise, keeping the knees bent and you're moving here and you're breathing, inhaling to center and exhaling to your left. Good, and keeping your shoulders anchored down, they're like roots for you. And we're just gonna do two more to each side. Awesome, job. Good, maybe you start to go a little lower as you're warming up here, maybe not. Don't strain your back. Awesome, good, come on back to center, bend the knees up if they aren't already, let them come on over to the right and you'll let them fall to the floor for a twist. Good, gaze past your left shoulder. Up to you, but I would like to take the right hand to the top of the left thigh and press it down, it, it feels like an anchor. Draw your left cheek towards the floor so maybe you can twist really gently, maybe you can twist a little deeper, stretching the neck and upper back. Locate your breath in the body. One more. And then take your time to slowly make your way on back up to center and then knees over to the left. Really casual in our twist here. So let your knees drop over to the left, do what feels good. You can let your left hand come to the top of the right thigh if it suits you. And then allow for your right ear and then perhaps even your right cheek turns towards the right as you gaze past your right shoulder. Locate breath in the body. All right, come on back up through center, squeeze the knees in. And then catch hold of the hamstrings. We're gonna rock up and down across the full length of the spine if that feels okay for you. So you'd rock up and back. If this does not feel good or safe for you, that's okay. You can simply rock side to side. Otherwise, we'll take about three more at your own pace. Okay, the next time, you rock, you can rock up to sit. And then from your seated position, come on over onto hands and knees or scooch to one side and simply make your way into your tabletop position. Spreading fingers nice and wide. Internally rotate the inner creases of the elbows slightly forward so that the inner creases of the elbows track over the, over the space between pointer and thumb. And then give a little press into the palms, feel the ground press back up at you. We hollow out the armpits, active. And on your next breath in, tuck the toes, soften the belly towards the floor, draw the chest forward, shoulder heads back. You can look upwards or straight ahead. 
As you breathe out, tops of the feet press, curl tailbone up and in, hollow out the armpits, gaze inward to your navel, let the chin tuck back towards the throat. And again on your inhalation, tuck toes, soften belly to the earth, draw the shoulder heads back, lift through the sternum. And as you exhale, curl it in, gaze in. And just like this, three more at your very own pace. Move with your breath. So exhale is into that cat shape, rounding the spine. Maybe even pop up onto your fingertips if you need a little bit of a different sensation in your cat cow today. Last one at your own pace. Good, come on back to neutral spine. Release your palms back to the floor if they aren't already. Ground down through your right hand. We're gonna inhale, sweep your left arm up and just start to open your heart and chest towards the left. It's okay if your left hip hikes with you, that's it. And then as you exhale, we're gonna thread the needle left arm behind the right, but you're gonna bend that right elbow like a little mini push up. You won't stay just yet because you're gonna inhale and sweep right back up, open your heart and chest. And then as you exhale, thread, left arm behind the right. Pressing into that right palm, spring back up, open heart, breath in. You might lean back into that twist and as you breathe out, bring it out. Last one like that, inhale, sweep. Good, exhale, thread, left arm behind the right, release the left shoulder to the floor. This time we'll settle into the twist and the left side of the head. For, for us at home, if the head does not touch the floor, if you have a prop like a book or even a pillow or a block, preferably, underneath the left side of the head, that might help support the neck. If your right hand, your right elbow can stay bent here, using your right hand to facilitate a deeper twist on exhale, or you might walk your right fingertips up a little bit higher up to the top of the mat, pressing fingertips into the earth, to draw that right shoulder blade back and in. Where's your breath? See if you can check in with your breath first before advancing your postures. It will tell you when. And then maybe you sweep your right arm up towards the sky and allow for the top of the right hand to stretch back behind you. And perhaps a half mind where the right hand goes to the left low back and maybe wraps onto the top of the left thigh. These are all just options. Notice your breath and twist and might start to feel a little constricted. Just slow it down. Good, I'm continuing to throw in one more option here. It would be to tuck the right toes, extend the right leg long on the mat and reach out through the right heel. Okay hey guys, we're just playing. You could stick with that or you can press really anchor through the top of the left hand in the top of the left foot as you float that right leg up. Now, if you keep the bind, that's gonna make it more challenging. So go for it if you want. If you fall onto your left side, that would be pretty typical. Okay, if you need to release the bind, you can. Let that right leg lift up as high as you'd like to. You guys, I'm gonna throw in one more option for you, just for fun. Maybe you bend your right leg, draw your right heel to your butt, and if you have the bind, you're going to have to release it for this one because you're going to reach your right hand towards your right foot. Catch hold. Just for fun. One more breath together. Slowly release that right leg. Release that right knee in. Press into your right palm. And then sweep it back up. Left in. Stretch that left arm to the sky. Inhale. Good. Exhale. Release that left hand back down and just shift right in. Okay. And then we'll go to the other side. So you're grounding your left palm. Good, and then inhale, sweep your right arm up, open to your heart and chest. It's okay to let your hips twist with you. And then as you exhale, thread your right arm underneath your left, bend that left elbow. And you're not gonna stay just yet because you're gonna root back and twist, big open heart, you can lean into it. And then exhale, thread. Good, you have two more like this. It's okay to move at your own pace. As you inhale, you stretch open, twist. As you exhale, you thread. Good, last one. Nice job, Megan. Good, big open, twist. And thread. And then here, we'll stay. So the right elbow releases to the floor, right side of the head to the earth, or maybe you got a prop there. 
you know, sometimes this simple, this first variation just feels so good and I prefer to stay there. So if that's for you, stay. Otherwise, walk your fingertips up a little higher. These are just the steps. You can stick with anyone for any period of time. Draw that left shoulder blade back and in as you twist over the exhalation. Okay, you might then let the left fingertips stretch up towards the sky and then let the top of the left hand reach back behind you as far as it wants as you open through the left armpit chest. And then maybe a half bind, left hand around to the right low back. You can catch hold of the top of the right thigh and use that bind to facilitate a deeper opening of the chest and shoulder. Okay, and then that option with the leg. This is up to you if you want to take it. It is your left leg, the same leg that you're twisting towards. You'll extend the left leg long, reaching the left heel back behind you so you're powering up first. Now that might be enough of a balance challenge. If you want to float it, press into the top of your right foot, lift up. Little shakes are okay. Good. You can go ahead and lift that left leg up as high as you want to. Reach out through that left heel like you're pressing it into a wall, an invisible wall. And there's that final option you'll have to release the bind for if you have it. You'll bend your left heel, draw it into your bottom first, and then take your left hand for that active left foot. I almost flipped back, you guys. Good, press into the top of the right foot, top of the right hand. Top, take one more breath wherever you're at. It's slowly release, I'm crumbling. <laughs> slowly release, ground your left hand, and reach it up, breath in, and then breath out, ground your, your right hand down. Good, and we'll tuck the toes, send the hips back to the heels, and just do a couple of pulses, stretching out through the soles of the feet. Good, and then send your hips back to your heels, manually untuck those little toes if that feels okay. And then stretch your arms out long and journey on over to your left side, as far over to the left as is comfortable for you today. Maybe walk your right fingertips up a little higher and press into the fingertips, breathe in. Breathe out, lengthen the spine over the left side body, forehead to the floor. You'll wrap the outer arm bones in. Where's your breath here? We have a saying in yoga that is, where the intention goes, the energy flows. So you have some tightness in your body or something that, you know, is just hurting or aching. Sending your awareness and your breath to that area invites energy flow, invites new blood, invites breath, oxygen. And as you exhale, imagine like you're releasing anything that's obstructing that space. And yoga makes us flexible in our bodies, but it also makes us flexible and in our minds and our hearts. Good, and then slowly lift up. Walk your way through center, and then all the way over to your right side. Walk as far towards the right as you need to here. Take a breath in for length. And then breathe out, stretch it out. Work your forehead to the floor. Breathe into the left side body, wrap the outer upper arm bones in. Let the forehead connect down if it wants to. And stay with your breath. Good, inhale, lift up just enough to walk your hands through center. And then here you are in downward facing dog prep. So all you have to do is send your hips up to the sky, get heavy into the heels, wrap the outer upper arm bones in, let your chin draw back to your throat. And we have about four breaths here in this first downward dog. So you can stay still if that's what the body needs, if that's what the mind needs, or maybe a little movement. You can bend both legs, send your heart and chest to the thighs, hips to the sky, and then exhale straight into the legs, heels to the floor. We might do that a couple times. Hold so, me back in neutral, downward facing dog. 
and we'll do our shift into plank and down dog. We've been doing this um, every week, so or just about. So as you go to plank, you're inhaling. As you go to down dog, you're exhaling. So sometimes we keep it simple, right? We just go plank, inhale, exhale, down dog. So you can stick with that, or you can start to transition in buffalo transition. This is where, as you come from down dog, you go to your tippy toes, you hollow out the armpits, you cuff the upper back, fake like the cat pose, you draw your chin to your throat, you activate your core a lot, a lot, a lot, draw the navel up and back. And then as you come into your plank, then you neutralize the spine, you take your inhale. And then as you exhale, you reverse that. You start to puff the upper back, hollow out the armpits, curl tailbone up and in, tippy toes, tippy toes, as you transition back to your downward dog, and then you neutralize the spine. And together, we're just gonna do about three more. So you might be taking it slowly because you're moving through the buffalo transition, like a buffalo, if you know the animal. Hollow out, and inhale it, neutralize. Exhale, reverse. Otherwise, you could stick with the simple plank and down dog. That might be just challenging enough. Okay, round the spine, draw the chin to the chest. You feel your core activating, you're doing it. Inhale, exhale, reverse it. Ooh, ooh. Heavy into the heels. We have one more wherever you're at. Up and back. Okay, that's it. Walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Take your time. When you get there, inhale for half lift. Exhale, folds over the legs, ragdoll pose. Knees can be bent to any amount. You might separate the feet a little bit wider. That's nice if hamstrings feel tight, back feels tight. And then you may catch hold of opposite elbow. Let your head hang. Relax your face, relax your jaw. You can rock a little side to side. Good. And then relaxing the fingertips out in front, draw the chin towards the chest, softly bend the knees and take your inhale to slowly roll all the way up. Imagine one vertebrae stacking at a time. And then we'll sweep the arms up overhead, the palms facing. Take a big, big, big stretch. Open through the heart and chest. Breath in and then breathe out, palms connect, float right on back over the legs. Half lift, inhale. And then as you exhale, walk your way all the way out into that high push-up or plank position. Here, we're gonna lower to the earth to a count of five. Now you can most certainly release your knees down. That would still count. Otherwise, inhale wherever you are. Exhale, elbow points behind you, elbows graze the side body. Four, three, good, two, one. Chin to the earth, tops the feet press. Good, cobra pose. Thumbs line up with just about the rib cage, fingers with the chest for some cobra alignment. Draw the elbow points back and in. Press into your toenails, press into the tops of the feet. Send the pelvis into the floor. That will help your low belly activate for you. And we're gonna lift and lower a few times. As you inhale, rise up, a baby cobra. Draw the shoulder heads back. Exhale, we're gonna undulate the spine down. So it's a little bit of an undulation, chest, throat, gaze, chin draws in. And then as you inhale, lift up, chest, throat, gaze. As you exhale, lower chest, throat, gaze. So it's a little bit of like a roll, right? As you inhale, chest, throat, gaze, you might feel inclined to lift up a little bit more, but keep your elbows drawing back and in, shoulders back, and then exhale, lower. Your own little undulation. Inhale, chest, throat, gaze. Exhale, lower chest, throat, gaze. Use your belly, use your legs. Inhale, draw the shoulder heads back. Exhale, roll it down, right? Maybe you're a little low. You don't have to go super high. Or you start to work it up a little bit higher. If you're working with straight arms, be sure that your pelvis is still on the floor and the elbows are still drawing in towards the side body. And lower it down. We just have two more, you guys. If you want to up-level it, you can even come up onto your fingertip. Inhale. Exhale, lower it down. Chin or forehead rest. Palms towards either side of you. Plant the palms. Tuck the toes. We're going to lift up to a count of five if you can. Remember, you can have your knees down. If you have your knees down, they stay to the earth right now. If you're going to lift a plank, lift your knee points off the floor. Breathe in. Breathe out. Four, three, two, one. Plank. Nice job. Inhalation. Exhale up and back. Downward facing dog. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Tip, toe, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Breath in for half lift. Breath out, fold. 
softly bend the knees, inhale, reach it out and up. Take a little back bend, open through your heart and chest. Exhalation, hands to heart center. Take a moment, connect to the earth, root down through the feet, crown of the head up to the sky. Sun salutations, go at your own pace, rest as you need to. Inhale, forward up. Exhale, fold down. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, left foot all the way back. Good, inhale, shine your heart. Exhale, we step it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank or high push up. As you exhale, vinyasa of your choice. I'm gonna go knees, chest, chin, so you can follow along with me. Knees tap down, elbows and close, hips high. Chin, chest, belly, slide the legs out. Toss the feet, press, inhale. For cobra, exhale, press it up and back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg sweeps up nice and high. Let's take an extra breath there. Exhale it out. Work the right heel towards the floor. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, round and squeeze nose to knee. Gaze between the hands and step the left foot there. You can always help it forward with the left hand. Pop up onto the fingertips, shine the heart, breath in. Breath out, right foot steps forward, fold over the legs. Softly bend the knees, inhale, reach down and up. Exhalation, hands to heart. Inhale, forward up. Exhale, swan dive, full through. Half lift, inhale, hands to shins or either side of the feet. Exhale, right foot all the way back. Inhale, shine your heart. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. Inhale, wave it forward, high push up, plank position. Exhale, vinyasa of your choice. Knees can go down, hips high, elbows graze the side body, chin, chest, belly. Slide the legs out long, cobra, inhale. Exhale, belly muscles lift us up and back. Next breath in, right leg up high. Stay there, breathe it out. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, round and squeeze the nose to knee. Gaze between the hands, step, right foot forward. Fingertips, breath in. Breath out, left foot forward, full. Inhale, roots to rise. Good old back bend. Exhalation, hands to heart. Take a moment. Good, inhale, forward up. Exhale, swan dive, fold. Half lift, breath in. Exhale, left foot back, ball mount of that back foot. We're gonna come up for high lunge. You can sweep your fingertips right on forward and up, or you can first pause at the right thigh. So you'll press your hands into the thigh to lift belly, chest, gaze. Soft bend back knee, quite a deep bend front knee, and then sweep your hands out and up. Palms facing. Right, so your left heel is slightly lifted off the floor and you're, you're reaching strong out through that back leg. Okay, in your lunge. Good, right, softly bending. Take two more full breaths here. See how deep can you bend in this right knee? No strain, just check it out. Good, breathe it in. Breathe it out, frame this front foot. Left hand ground to the inside of the right foot. If it feels okay, you can bring that left hand off the mat and you'll sweep the right arm open towards the sky. So you're twisting heart and chest to the right. We're gonna lean into it. So it's almost like you're taking a back bend or you are taking a back bend. And then from there, if it still feels okay, let's take that right hand behind the head and press the head into the hand, hand back into the head that supports the neck, right elbow point back. One more breath, strong leg. Good, slowly frame that front foot. You're back in that high, low lunge as you inhale. As you exhale, step it back, down dog. Maybe you stay, you don't always have to go to vinyasa, right? Or inhale, move it through, plank. Exhale, vinyasa of your choice. I'm gonna demonstrate chaturanga, just in case you wanna go for that next. You lower just halfway. Elbow squeeze towards either side of you. Then inhale, roll into the tops of the feet. Pelvis is off the floor, that's up dog. Exhale, we meet, downward facing. Good, inhale, left leg high. Exhale, big step, left foot forward. You can help it forward, take your time to set up. Left ankle below left knee. Good, you can sweep your fingertips forward and up or pause at the left thigh, good, press into the hands to lift. And then sweep your hands out and up. Soften back knee, deep bend front knee. We're gonna hold and breathe here. Keep reaching out strong through that back leg. Play with how deep, how deep can I really comfortably bend 
into this left knee. Don't strain. Inhale. Exhale, frame that front foot, taking the right hand to the inside of the left foot, or maybe you take it off the mat. Big open twist, left arm high. And then lean into that twist. So let, like a cobra, like a back one of the upper back, letting your heart and chest open towards the sky. And then if it still feels okay, take your left hand behind the head. Press the hand into the head and the head back into the hand. The left elbow point behind you. Keep reaching out through that back leg. One more breath. Good, left arm high, breathe it in, breathe it out. Frame that front foot, high, low lunge, inhale. Exhale, right foot steps it forward and fold. Just dangle there for a breath. Softly bend the knees, inhale, reach out and up. Little back bend. Exhalation, hands to heart. Okay, we're gonna come into mountain pose. Palms are facing forward. Take a breath in, shrug the shoulders up to the ear. And as you breathe out, relax and bow and bow. Imagine the crown of the head extending to the sky, the soles of the feet rooting to the floor. We're gonna take our hands to the hip points. And this is just to facilitate a leveling of the hips. We're gonna do a little balance, standing balance called marching. So it's like marching. You're just moving in slow motion, essentially. And take it just a gaze down and see just whereabouts you are on your mat. We're gonna to try to see if we could stay in about the same place, but no worries if you move. Rooting down through the right foot, find your gaze point, lift your left leg up. See if you can keep your hips level, flex the left toes up towards the knee. It doesn't have to go super high, right? Hip, hip height or lower. And then ground your left foot. Imagine like you're pressing your left foot into like sticky, not glue, but you know, it's staying put. <laughs> and you lift your right leg up, flex your toes. I was thinking like a mouse trap, but that would be weird, right? And then ground your right foot back down. It roots. And then you lift your left. Right? It's okay for a little wobbly. This is just a balance practice. And I'll tell you, I, after practicing yoga for about a decade, I learned this really simple practice. And I challenged with it. It was a little bit of a challenge for me because keeping my hips level was difficult at the time. Right? So just be where you're at. If this is enough for you to stay here, stay here. Otherwise, as the right knee lifts up, your left arm, opposite arm will sweep up, fingertips stretch to the sky, right arm at the side, right fingertips stretch to the floor. And then you're gonna switch as you transition, right foot grounds, left knee reaches up, right fingertips stretch up towards the sky, left fingertips root down, and then you'll switch, left foot roots, right arm down, left arm sweeps, and it pulls you upward. Ground your right foot, left leg up, right arm sweeps. Awesome grounds. We're using our core, we're using our leg muscles, left arm sweeps up, right knee up. Good root, lift. Stretching in opposite directions. You just have one more to each side. Ground that foot, right leg lifts. Ground that right foot, left leg lifts. And let it go. Good. Come back to your mountain. Maybe check out where, how'd you do? Good. And then if you're not already at the top of your mat, come to the top of your mat. We'll go into sun salutation B. Hands to heart. Inhale, reach it forward and up. Chair pose. That's Utkatasana chair. Sink really low like you're going to sit back into your favorite chair. Heart and chest forward. Take another full breath here. Inhale. Exhale, fold over the legs. Half lift, breath in. As you exhale, here are your options. You could step back down dog, you could step back to plank vinyasa, or you can hop back with bent elbows through chaturanga, you lower halfway. This is just an option. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment. On your next inhale, the right foot steps forward. Line up ankle below knee. Grounding back foot, 45 degree-ish angle, coming up for warrior one. You can pause at the thigh or sweep the fingertips, right forward and long. Sink low. Let's take our hands to the hips just for a moment. Draw the left hip forward, right hip back and in, and sink low into this front knee. Another full breath here. Inhale. Exhale, frame that front foot, bomb out of that back foot, 
Step that right leg, we'll send it all the way up and back, three-legged dog, inhale. Exhale, round and squeeze, nose to knee. Step that right foot to the top, same side. So the right foot's forward, ground that back foot. So this time we're gonna start to straighten the right leg for pyramid stretch. Right, so it's a, a hamstring stretch. If you do happen to have blocks, right, they might be the either side of your right foot. Right? Imagine setting the tip of your tailbone towards the left heel. So the right hip draws back and in. And you can let your upper back round here, that would be okay. And if your head drops, that's cool too. The further you walk your hands past the right foot, usually the deeper the stretch, the closer in, usually the lesser. Take what you need. Three more breaths, soak it up. Good, frame this front foot, bend the right knee, set the back foot back, inhale. As you exhale, we're gonna send this right leg back for three-legged plank, right? So here are your options. You can hold this. You could take a three-legged chaturanga. You could take another vinyasa, or you can even rest, right? So as you exhale, if you're going for it, you lower just halfway. Inhale, top of the right foot lands, top of the left foot lands. Good, draw the shoulder heads back. Exhale it up and back, down dog. Here we have two breaths, so it might be a child's pose for you, right? Maybe a sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> Letting go of anything that obstructs, right? That open space or that dedication. Down dog. Inhale, exhale, tiptoe step or hop to the top. If you wanna play with hopping, try this. Bring the two big toes to touch. Bend the knees and the heart and chest to the thighs. Gaze to the top of the mat. Take your inhale breath. Start to empty out your exhale. At the bottom of your exhale, hop nice and light to the top of the mat. And then you'll inhale halfway, nice job. And exhale, fold. And then softly bend the knees, inhale, reach out and up. Little back bend if it feels good. Exhale, hands to heart. And other side, inhale, reach forward and up. Exhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sink low. This time we're gonna take our hands back behind us, interlace the fingers, interlock the thumbs, squeeze the shoulders onto the back, taking your inhale. As you exhale, start to fold over the legs. Once the belly connects to the thighs, you can go ahead and straighten your legs. Hands can stay at the low back or maybe they float up overhead. Let your head and neck relax, face jaw relax. Good. We have at least three more breaths here. If this feels a bit much for the shoulders, you can always keep your hands at the low back with the elbows bent. Otherwise, they're reaching up and over. Good, we'll bend back into the legs, release the hands to the low back, sweep them up, chair, inhale. Exhale, fold over the legs, half lift breath in. As you exhale, step back, meet us in down dog or hop back. If you're hopping back, you're going nice and light. Elbows bent, nice, inhale. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Next inhale, left foot steps forward. Ground this back foot, 45 degree angle, warrior one. Rise up, reach it out and up. If it supports you, hands to the hips, draw the right hip forward. Left it back and in. Sink nice and deep, front leg. Two more breaths here. Find your breath, find a gaze point. Inhale, exhale, frame that front foot, bottom out of the back foot, left leg sweeps it up high. Breath in, breath out, nose to knee. Step the left foot, that's the same side. Ground this back foot. Slowly begin to straighten the front leg for pyramid. Okay. Find a grounded stance so that you can comfortably draw your left hip back and in. So the tailbone now draws towards the right heel. Head can hang if that's comfortable. Connect to your breath. See if you can send your breath into the ribs of the back body. As you inhale, puff up, expand. As you exhale, release, relax. You could do that, or you can send your breath to areas that are tense, where the intention flows, the energy flows.
Good, bend your left leg. Bomb onto the back foot, breathe in. Breathe out, left leg back. Now it hovers for three like a plank. And you can hold there, it'd probably be about three breaths. You can take other options or lower halfway. Inhale, tops of the feet press. Draw the shoulder heads back. Exhale it up and back, down dog. Two full breaths. All right, we're gonna meet at the top of the mat, but this time we're gonna meet into Malasana or Yogi Squat. So you can hop to the outside of your hands or you can step. So be mindful if you're hopping, just take it easy, breathe it in, gaze to the top. And then as you exhale, empty out and then hop to the outside of your hands into Yogi Squat. Otherwise that's where you can step. Toes are out, about, heels are about as wide as the mat. Hands to heart center, settle in. We're gonna do a little flow here to start. So inhale here in your yogi squat. And then as you exhale, folding over the legs. So your toes might stay reaching out towards either side or they can turn forward. And then you'll inhale, sink into malasana. And then you'll exhale, fold. And just three more like this. Move at your breath, inhale, sink in. And then your exhale, you fold. Good, the next time you settle into your malasana, opportunity to stay here. You might sit on a block, right? Or you might be up a little higher. Well, we're gonna eventually meet in down dog. So you can stay here, breathe, or I'm gonna offer up crow. Just be mindful, take your time. If you're afraid of falling onto your face, this is an arm balance. You can always take a blanket in front of you. And then the good news is that if you do crumble, you're really close to the ground. So I always say that it's kind of like when they watch a baby fall, they're so close to the ground, it's not that tragic. Usually, okay, so hands down, spread the fingers wide, send the sit bones back behind you. This is your, an option. If you know your way, go ahead into it. Otherwise, heel toe the feet in, turn the toes slightly out. Arms start straight, breathe it in, puff the belly, breathe it out, pull the navel up and back, bend the elbows like a chaturanga, send the knees to the upper arm bones as high up as you can, perhaps even to the armpits. Keep that active core, draw the navel up and back, and then maybe you gaze forward and maybe you start to peel the toes off the earth. Keep a strong drishti at focus point. Draw the heels to the bottom and the toes towards each other. That's it. Good. So if you want to still play here, you can have a little bit more time. Otherwise, you can step back. Downward dog will meet you. Just an option. If you're not already in down dog, we'll meet there. Good, right leg up high. This time we'll bend the right leg at the knee joint and open the hip. Right hip stacks higher than left. Take a breath. Right leg high, exhale, big step, right foot to the top, and then back to that high lunge. Okay, we're gonna sweep it out and up or forward and up, your choice. High lunge pose. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of a warrior three flow here. So I'll show you what that is. You could do it with me. Your arms will sweep down, forward, up, and in as you bring that left knee into your heart, right? And then you'll sweep them back, down, back, and up as you step it back for high lunge. Just take your time here, see what happens. Maybe you step in a little bit and then you bring it in. You flow it back up, knee to chest, and then back down, back and up, high lunge. Nice, back, down and up to heart, knee in. That's your flow. Now, you could start to slow it down and make it more dramatic so you're coming through a warrior three as you step back. And then as you come back up, you come back through that warrior three, that's this position here, and then bring it back in. Nice, we're gonna do three more like that. Bring it back, slow, step it back, high lunge, down, back and up and in. Right, or you're moving it really slow. The slower you do this, usually the more challenging it might be for a balance. We're gonna meet back into that high lunge, you'll step it all the way back, inhale. Exhale, frame that front foot, down dog. If you wanna clear out with a vinyasa, you can. Otherwise, you can even take a child's pose, rest. We'll meet up and back, downward facing dog. Okay, left leg up high. Bend the left leg at the knee joint and open the hip. Breathe.
Good, inhale, left leg high. Exhale, big step, left leg to the top. Come into that high lunge, now take your time. This is the beginning of your balance. Hold steady here, right? You're gonna move at your own pace, okay? And then when you're ready, sweep your hands back, down, up and in, right knee into the chest, active feet. Good, then back, down, up, overhead, high lunge. Nice, good, back, down, forward, up and in, knee to chest, back, down, up, overhead. Right, so you could start to slow it down, right? Moving into that warrior three, back and in, and transitioning back to that warrior three as you're moving almost like slow motion. I like to think of, of moving in space, right? What that might be like, you're defying gravity, and you're moving in slow motion. If you lose the flow with the hands, no worries. You can find your own little flow. Back down, forward, in. We're going to do three more. Move it slow if you can. High lunge. Back, forward, up, and in. Good. Next time you're ready to step it all the way back into the high lunge, go forward, inhale. Exhale. Downward dog. Here we'll meet downward dog on your next inhale for plank. One more time, lowering down to that count of five. Remember, your knees can go down, otherwise breathe in. Breathe out. Four, three, two, one. Good, let's let a cheek rest. Arms at your sides, you can let a cheek rest. Or maybe you like your hands up. I'm letting a cheek rest on your hands. Let your belly relax to the earth. Feel your heart beat. Okay, we'll take our hands back behind us. Chin or forehead rest down. We're gonna have the palms face down, the pinkies in. They might even tuck a little bit under the thighs. Feet together to start, and then separate them just an inch. Press the tops of the feet to the floor. Press the pelvis into the floor, press the hands into the floor, and then inhale, just lift up upper chest, shoulder, head, neck. And so you don't have to go up super high. We wanna activate, lengthen, and strengthen the back body as we use the core to lift the front body. And then the upper back is supporting us in broadening the collarbones and drawing the shoulder heads back. So here's where you could stay. We're gonna take about two to three more breaths. You might feel inclined to lift up a little higher, but don't strain. Big belly breaths into the earth. Thanks, Jack. Inhale, exhale, lower all the way down, rest opposite cheek. Let the heels drop out towards either side. Let the belly be so relaxed into the earth. Disengage for a moment. All right, chin or forehead, rest down. Sweep your hands back behind you. This time, thumb side down, pinky side up, palms face in. Press the pelvis gently into the floor. Feet pointing back behind you. Inhale, lift up head, chin, chest, feet, leg, knees, everything lifts off. Locus, draw the shoulders down and back. A little up level, if you're able to, interlace your hands behind you, send the knuckles between the heels. Now, you don't need to be very high, right? It might be low. If you're breathing deep, Great. If you lift up high and your breath can't flow, then you might have gone too far. We're going to take three more big belly breaths. Stretch out through those toes. Squeeze the thighs. Good. Your next inhale, lift it up. Awesome. Exhale, slowly release. Opposite cheek. Rest. If you want a little low back compression, release. You can bend your knees, let them go wide, and just windshield wiper. Side to side. And we'll let them go. Here's a practice. We're going to go to child's pose. So if you want to try this out, you can. Let your knees come as wide as your mat. 
hands to either side. Take your breath in. As you breathe out, press it up and back. Connect your toes together, and then you can sit right back to so wide knee. Wide knee child pose. Let your arms be passive. You might even flip your palms to face up, releasing the wrists. Let your belly hang here. No one's looking. Release the tension in your belly if you can. Take another breath. Okay, lift up. And also walk your hands back to your knees. Shift to one side and swing the legs around. We're gonna take a forward folding. Jani Shrasasana. So the left leg comes out on a slight angle, flex the toes. Right foot connects to the left groin. Now you can scooch the flesh around a little bit here. <clears throat> Take your hands, sweep them up. Breath in, turn your heart, chest, torso towards the left leg. And then as you breathe out, fold over that left leg. Hands frame this front leg. And you might have your hands to the shin or the ankle or the foot or nothing at all. Let your head hang if that's okay. A bend in the left knee is welcomed. We're gently pressing right foot to left groin, left groin back into right foot to support the back. Connect to your breath. Two more. And inhale, lift up just enough. Slowly start to walk your hands back in. And then inhale, sweep your hands up. As you exhale, relax your hands at your sides, draw your chin to your chest. And then right leg comes long on a slight angle. Left foot goes to right groin. And you can scooch the flesh around a little bit. Maybe you use your hands so you can center at your seat. Take an inhale, sweep your arms up. Turn heart and chest to your right. And exhale, fold over the right leg. Each side might be a little different. We welcome that. It happens in yoga, I find, in myself, and in, in my students, and my clients over the years. This amazing phenomenon happens usually where the sides just even themselves out. So you don't have to worry about it. You can bend your knee here. You can press your leg into your foot and your foot back into your leg. And slowly walk your way back in. Ground down through the seat. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, relax them at your sides. Draw your chin to your chest. And then lift up enough so you can lift your gaze. And then come to your back, however you'd like to. If you happen to have a block, just keep it nearby. If you don't have a block, no worries. Okay, come onto your back as you need to. All right. Once you are on your back, bend your knees in, plant your feet. And if you don't have a block option, if you'd like it to take a supported shoulder stand where you just let your legs come 90 degrees. This is an inversion. If you have a block, you'll press your feet to the floor, lift the hips up, take the block at low level underneath your low back at your sacrum. And then from there, you can lift your legs up. Listen. Once again, invite to have your arms neutral energy at your sides. More grounding, one hand at the belly, one at the heart. And if you want to stick with uplifting, airing out, arms up overhead. Take what you need. Shoulder stand is a way to rejuvenate the lymphatic system. Helps with venous return. Energetically reorganizes the prana, the life force. So we're not going for big sensation here. A little tingliness is okay. If you start to feel numb, it's usually okay, but you can come out whenever you need to.
Okay, if your legs are up, take your time to slowly plant your feet down. And just let the blood rush down back to the feet. And then press the feet into the earth, lift the block away, slide it out of the way and slowly lower to your back. If there's anything else you need, take it. Otherwise, come into your Shavasana, your final rest. Whistles if you can drop out towards either side. Legs long, arms a little bit away from the body, palms facing up, back of the head heavy. Nothing left to do, just to be. And slowly start to create some small movements. And bring your attention to your breathing. Noticing sounds around you. Noticing your energy, any shifts in awareness. You can wiggle your fingers or toes. And rock your head from right to left. And then bending your knees and planting your feet. Rolling to one side, whichever you'd like to, right or left. Just curl your knees in close if that's okay. And slowly pressing yourself up into a seated position. We'll take the hands together, thumb knuckle to the heart, calling back to that dedication without any attachment to outcome. And sticking with the overlying intention of staying within the mystery without the need to know. Thank you so much for your practice. So grateful for you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much for being here.